But that's only half of this half of the episode. Parsley has her own family feud to sort out. Yay! A bit of background nonsense to preface this upcoming rubbish. Parsley is met with an enormous surprise back home. She has a newly born baby sister. <laughs> now the semester hasn't been going on for longer than a couple of weeks at this point. A month at the most. I refuse to believe anything else, seeing as how elementary the classes in the upcoming episodes are. And despite being gone for such a brief while, Parsley is surprised by the happy news. Given these facts, the dwarfs in this universe breed at an amazing rate. A less than a month of carrying time? Holy fuck fever, Batman! That is a lot of baby dwarfs if anyone feels like getting busy. And in the case of Parsley's family, someone is getting busy! Now it is curious how come all of Parsley's brothers are around the same age, give or take a few years, while Parsley herself is considerably more mature. Why did her parents decide to hold off from more bedroom baby factory business for several years after having Parsley, and then suddenly crank the libido to max? Could it be to justify some lame conflict between the parents and their eldest offspring? Yes. Yes, it is. Only a couple of months till I have all my girls back under one roof. You mean for the holidays, right? <clears throat> oh, silly me. I wasn't supposed to bring this up until after dinner. Bring what up? I'm gonna help with that firewood. No, oh, it's nothing, dear. It's just... <sighs> We're wondering if you've got it out of your system yet. Got what out of my system? School? We're sure it's interesting there. But we want what's best for the family. And it's a lot of work here for just your father and I. So, if you're done trying it out, we're ready for you to come back. I'm gonna go sit on the roof for a bit. Now, Parpar, -par, don't be upset. It's fine. I just... This is a lot. Now that was... Dumb. From a multitude of angles. What exactly do Parsley's parents need her at home for? To man the forge? To help with the flock of kid brothers? Everything seems to be going just fine without Parsley in the house. There doesn't seem to be an overflow of customers. The mom isn't stressed by housework. And the brothers are just doing whatever at their own leisure. Couldn't any of the twerps be of use? Are they too young? Apparently, Parsley has been helping around the house ever since she was little. So why not make the brothers carry their weight as well? Why is Parsley specifically needed back home again? Oh, right, no particular reason. Just manufacture drama for drama's sake. Wonderful. Par for the course. Or should I say, parsley for the course? Oh, -ho! I am on fire today. Top of the shelf dad jokes flying left and right. But to be perfectly fair, maybe the parents are worried that one of the brothers will end up killing themselves. Or someone else. Seeing as some of them exhibit blooming psychopathic tendencies. Ow. Spurge, what have I told you? Trousers first, then belt? We don't stab dinner guests. You're not the mom of us! Hey, why don't you walnuts go gather some firewood for dinner? Go, go on now. What have I told you? Implying that this has happened before? What kind of parents are these two if they just let their kids run around casually stabbing people with cutlery? Anyway, after sulking in dramatic lighting for a wee while, Parsley has a rebuttal for her parents the following day. So, uh, Angie tells me you're a botanist, hmm? <laughs> yes. I just started working for the council that organizes Lingard's fauna processional. <laughs> oh, we take the kids every year. Have you been in town long? No. Time, please. Misplaced my appetite. Gonna go find it. Okay. 
She shouldn't treat time like a child. She is a child, Parsley. You both are. I never got to be a child, Mom. I've been looking after my brothers my whole life, and I love them. They've been my whole world. But I finally get this shot to make something of myself, and you want me to leave? <sighs> Just to come back here and... and what? End up like you? Parsley, you apologize to your mother this instant. Why? You have another girl now. Raise her to be the help. Parsley insists she never got to be a kid. She laments that she always had to take care of other people her whole life. So, to make something of herself, she instead decided to attend an academy where she supposedly trains to become a protector of other people. She could never make something of herself by working at her family's forge, so she goes out to attend an academy where she herself picks forging as her specialization, because that wasn't something she could do back home by learning from her father. None of this makes sense. How hard can it be to write a single character in this godforsaken show with motivations that actually follow any kind of logical through line? Here, I'll fix this shit for you. Just say that the dwarves are super race slash family oriented. It's their custom to be isolated. Parsley's family has fled to Lingarf because of the rot and they are suspicious of the other races and their organizations, like the Guardian Academy, make it so that Parsley wants to do something other than be a blacksmith, say that she wants to be a mage, an alchemist, something that's unnatural for their kind in this universe, or say that she wants to be a warrior, a police officer, a peacekeeper, and have it so that her possibly racist family doesn't care about the other races or their safety, because the dwarves are such an isolated people, just do something that actually puts her at odds with her family and legacy. If you want to create drama, then actually place differing ideals against each other. Don't just have your characters whine about nonsense, while taking obvious snipes at the role of traditional housewives. Yes, I saw that. You ain't slipping that past me, you vindictive cunts. Parsley, is your brother supposed to be on the roof? Before the issue can develop further, there's convenient trouble afoot. I'm not sure what to call this trope. You know, whenever the writer clearly doesn't know how to end a conversation naturally, so they throw in some kind of nuisance to interrupt it. Saved by the random bullshit bell, perhaps? Uh, uh, baby, uh, stay still. Oh my lord, what are we gonna do? Well, we just saw Parsley sulking up on the roof, so maybe she can just use whatever path she took last time, grab her brother and bring him back down, or she can just MacGyver this ridiculous plan together that works too. And it's mighty super duper ultra mega special awesome that she and Fime can coordinate this plan perfectly on the fly, without exchanging any words. That's the way any conflict in this show works. Some trouble is introduced, and then it's just fixed, just like that. There's barely enough time to be invested in anything, even if I didn't wish for all these characters to die horribly. Now allow me to guide your eye to a subtle detail in this scene. Notice how everything is handled by the vagina folk. The father of the family just stands there gawking like an idiot, despite the fact that it's your kid up on the roof! You pathetic, castrated, insult to your gender! You should be the first one to jump into action, climb up there, tell your kid to sit tight and not move a goddamn muscle. But no! Why would a father care about the safety of their own flesh and blood? after making such a fuss about wanting to have all of his family under one roof. 
I guess that goes dead or alive. Not to mention that, of course, the kid Bruffer climbs up on the roof no trouble whatsoever, but then suddenly turns into a kitty cat stuck in a tree. As if boys are incapable of climbing except in one direction. The writer's views are really showing in this episode. What was it again? All men are trash? Short story short, the day is saved by the empowered female brigade. Huzzah! And Parsley's parents are so impressed by her awesomeness, they completely flip their position, admit they were wrong about everything, support Parsley in her aspirations 100%, basically do what they should have done from the fucking beginning. And when I say Parsley's parents, I mean Parsley's mom. The father gets no more dialogue, no screen time, no nothing. Because why the fuck would you get both parents in on the lovey dovey family wholesomeness when we can give that screen time exclusively to the vagina folk? No reason to talk things through with your father, the one who actually initiated the conflict. Nope, no reason at all. 10 out of 10 writing. <laughs> Maybe I could visit some weekends, even when the school is not being exterminated. We would love that. Your academy is in the same city. You could have dinner with your family any flipping day of the week. How fitting is it that the literal final line of the episode encapsulates it so perfectly in all of its nonsensical, artificial, forced no stakes whatsoever glory. Episode 4 tries to have a unifying thematic through line. The topic of the day is family drama. Each of the girls carries some kind of baggage, insecurities, or are at odds with their parents due to differing ideals. That is, in theory. In reality, every plotline, every conflict in the episode is nonsensical drivel, Propaganda masquerading as drama, a 20 minute stretch of meaningless noise before it's all wrapped up and ignored. None of the alleged troubles with their families hinder the girls in any way. They aren't forced to reflect upon themselves, to grow, to change, maybe even admit that they aren't as ready as they thought they were. The fact that there actually is an overarching theme proves that the writers are fully aware of what they are doing. A specific premise like this does not happen by accident. The lackluster script isn't due to budget or time constraints. This episode alone debunks all of that. The author has a message, a vision they wish to share. It's just that their vision is shit. This episode is one of the most frustrating ones in the entire show, because if these issues were handled with any kind of finesse, if the author had injected some actual layers to the characters, in a well-written show, this would be a standout episode. The core of a character is always who they are as people, not their skill set, heroic deeds, or any random feat of strength but rather the motivations behind their actions, and character's relationship to their loved ones is a vital component of that. For me, it is always far more interesting to see characters interact amongst themselves, rather than the part where the hero punches the villain real hard in the face. This episode squanders a perfectly valid setup for meaningful character building, repeatedly, and I hate it for it. In addition to the usual crap at this point. And as always, a huge thanks to each and every one of you for watching till the end. The comments, the kudos, the likes, the subs, it's all appreciated and honestly makes the work that goes into these videos worth it. And a special thank you to each of my supporters on Patreon, you guys are awesome, 
as well as an extra special thanks to my 10 euro patron Wyland. If any of you would wish to join these fine people, or check out my other creative stuff, hint hint, all the links are down below. Take care everyone, and I'll see you all in the next one.